Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Monday, October the 29th. My name's Eric Wilkinson and some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, I'm here to teach you some different strategies that you can then implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. Also, remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having that out of the way, let's get it on with some economic data. Uh, across the pond, it is a Monday, so we are going to probably see a little bit lighter than um, uh, normal economic data, but we did get some decent stuff coming out across the pond. Uh, we got, actually, we didn't get out anything across the pond now that I'm thinking about it. It was uh, here in the United States, we got core PCE, which is personal consumption expenditures. That's a pretty important economic data point. It came in at 0.2% expected to be 0.1. Personal spending came in at 0.4% expected to be 0.4% albeit they did revise last num month's numbers up two tenths of a percent to, from 0.3% to 0.5%. Personal income, this is the one that we've been talking about. We wanna see personal income ratchet up a little bit to offset some of the higher costs of goods and services. That will spark uh, more of uh, the economic picture if we start seeing more uh, personal income, we're not seeing that came in at 0.2%, expected to be 0.4%. And they revised last month's number up slightly from 0.3% to 0.4%, which kind of helps out that headline number, but still a negative number uh, nonetheless. And then uh, later on this week, we have on Thursday, Friday, bank holiday in Europe. It's going to be uh, slow for the most part as people try and get their positions hedged up. We do have the ISM, which is our Institute of Supply Management coming out uh, later on in the week. That's going to be one of the more important numbers we look at for our economic uh, picture. That is coming out on Thursday. So we have some good economic data coming out this week. All right, on to the overall market. Crude oil right there at that $67 handle. Uh, that is lining up right perfectly just about with our point of control, which is right there around uh, 68. So this market, we talked about the big moves over the oversupply. We're starting to see big builds happening in crude oil. I expected it to come down right around to this level where the point of control is the most time and volume. That has a tendency to be a calming pricing area where the most time and volume has been spent when people uh, uh, are at or near where they got involved, they aren't as uh, itchy to get out of that trade, whether it being a winner or a loser. And then gold futures are in negative territory, but aren't really making a whole lot of move. They're really waiting to see what shoe drops in the equities. Uh, we've got the bonds uh, unchanged for the most part, maybe down a couple of ticks on the day again. Equity is higher on the day. The rest of the market trying to discern whether or not this is a real move higher if we found a bottom or if it is uh, a fake out. Right now, VIX coming off just a little bit, still in the 20s, which is signaling we still have volatility ahead. But when we go and look at the equities, we can see that the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up almost 300 points, well off the highs of the day, which right out of the gates, we rallied pretty hard to the highs of the day and have since seen a little bit of profit taking going on. We are above this point of control, but keep in mind this, uh, or sorry, we are above the point of control, obviously, but we're also above this 23 Fibonacci level, which is uh, generally going to act as a support and resistance. One could say that it has acted as a support and resistance in and around this point of control. So my view on it is it could pop back and forth. It's not going to be a major line in the sand, if you will. It's going to uh, kind of settle down in and around this, kind of like what we saw back there with the crude oil. Again, uh, NASDAQ in positive territory just slightly, but again, lining up with the point of control. All of this stuff not really giving us a discernible direction at this point. All the charts the way you look at these candles are just back and forth. It's just a lot of gyrating to find out 
who's got the weaker hand, whether the Bulls are going to end up winning or the Bears end up winning. That's what we start seeing on this tussle back and forth. It is close to the point of control. I would say would want to migrate uh, towards that area for the better part of the week. That's the way I'm kind of seeing this happening in the setup right now is um, maybe some tightening up in and around this point of control for the rest of the week. You know, the thing that could throw a kink in that theory would be some of the economic data, but um, I don't think we're going to get that until later on in the week anyway. All right, E-mini S&Ps, probably uh, up more so in percentage terms than either the NASDAQ or the Dow at this point. And you can see overnight inventory really had no uh, discernible direction. Then off the open in the markets, we started getting a rally to the highs. Now it's just consolidating, lack of volume, not a whole lot to uh, discern for direction going forward. It's probably going to rely mostly on the earnings to give us a direction more so than the economic data because that economic data that's we're really going to be looking at isn't until later on in the week. So um, it could be a touch and go based on those earnings giving the sentiment to the overall markets. All right. On to what I'm looking to do with FedEx. If you guys remember, this wasn't this trade wasn't on for very long. Uh, as a matter of fact, I only put it on a, not too many days ago, to be quite honest. And I have on the November, I'm short the 185 puts in there with the high implied volatility. Was thinking we found a little bit of a bounce here. That implied volatility allowed me to get really far away. Uh, that being said, I sold those originally for I think it was right around a dollar twelve. I'm looking to try and get out for 45 cents. It was close early this morning. Uh, it's starting to come back. We started seeing a bit of a pullback now. I'm starting to see uh, FedEx move a little bit higher. I think the low of the day was somewhere in the 50s, so I'm a little bit far away. I'm going to be looking to cover that uh, by the end of the day because I'm at 50% of my max profit. Right now, just trying to squeeze it out as the overall broader markets look like they're going to be put going to push a little bit higher. I'm going to look to take that off sometime today. All right, that's about it. Other than later on this week, Thursday, when we get all that good economic data, I'm going to be doing a webinar after the close on the long iron butterfly, or sorry, long iron condor. Um, so check that one out. It's not one that I implement all too often, but there are great setups for this strategy, especially in uh expansion and volatility type environments like we've seen here in the last couple of weeks would be great uh, to have taken advantage of some of these type of strategies. So I'm going to show you how to set those up in Thursday's webinar. So if you can't take that, take it easy.